Our next speaker moved from a modest home in suburban Cleveland, where she entertained family members and friends, to Studio 8H at Rockefeller Center in New York City to be part of one of the most successful television shows in the history of that medium. She was a member of Bloomer's, Penn's all-female comedy sketch club, and later was a standout performer at Chicago's renowned Second City Comedy Club. And she does say she credits Penn with encouraging her passion to be funny. Please join me in welcoming to the podium a member of a graduating class of 2004 and our guest speaker today, smart and funny, Vanessa Bayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much for that introduction, um, and thank you for having me today. Uh, congratulations, communications majors. Way to go. And I, uh, I was sitting where you are sitting seven years ago, and I remember thinking, I have to go to three of these ceremonies? That joke would have hit a little harder if Andrew hadn't pooched it. <laughs> um, but uh, this one was my favorite of the three ceremonies because um, you get free food after. Um, just kidding, kind of. Um, but the reason I'm here today, aside from the free food, is that I was sitting where you communications majors are sitting seven years ago, and now I'm a featured cast member, as you heard, on Saturday Night Live. Today I'd like to tell you about my journey from UPenn to Studio 8H at Rockefeller Center. I can still remember my first few weeks at Penn, meeting new friends, getting lost in the quad, discovering the waffle machine and the soft serve machines in the dining hall, and using a combination of the two to reach that inevitable freshman 15 with lightning speed. About a week after arriving at Penn, I found myself at the Freshman Performing Arts Night. After watching various performing arts groups, do on campus do a show, I decided to get involved. I remember auditioning for Penn's renowned a cappella group, Off the Beat, and then, after nailing my elementary school go-to, give my regards to Broadway, not even getting a call back. I could name other groups that passed on the Bayer magic, but we probably don't have time. I'd always loved comedy and was excited to find out about Bloomers. As you all heard, Bloomers is Penn's all-female sketch comedy and musical parody troupe. I don't remember exactly what I did in my Bloomers audition, but I do remember yelling a lot and improvising a commercial for yeast infection medicine. <laughs> Just real highbrow stuff. Doing comedy with Bloomers would prove to be a defining factor in my college experience and my future career. So I guess the joke's on you, Strictly Funk Dance Troupe. I auditioned for that as well. They said, no, thank you. But when I came to Penn, I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I'd always liked biology, so I considered being a biology major. I imagined it leading to a career as a doctor who's maybe on TV as a health correspondent like Sanjay Gupta, or um, a career as a biologist who um, has her own show on TV, <laughs> or a medical researcher who is um, somehow on TV. <laughs> it took me about a semester to realize that I didn't want to work in biology, I wanted to work in TV. Also, college biology is so hard. I ended up finding, that's my aunt who was laughing just now. I ended, <laughs> I ended up finding that a communications major was the perfect fit. From Dr. Jordan, Dr. Jordan's Children and Media to Dr. Marvin's Freedom of Expression, I learned to appreciate the power of media. 
My professors even encouraged me to study beyond the classroom, which led to internships at Sesame Street and Late Night with Conan O'Brien. These internships got me excited about working on TV and more on the path to doing so. My senior year at Penn, I spent the majority of my time doing sketch comedy with bloomers and studying for classes. I didn't have a boyfriend because I didn't have time for one. <laughs> I, also, I also had no job prospects, but I knew that I would be moving to Chicago to pursue my passion for comedy. My communications professors and even my career counselor were all thrilled for me. In fact, go pursue your dreams was the message I got from everyone at Penn. Except this one boy who I took to a senior formal whose message was, I think I'm going to go home because there, you puked on your dress. Um, I really did that. So, Sorry, Mom and Dad. Okay. Um, <laughs> Something you talk about at a commencement speech, right? Okay. Uh, after graduating, I moved to Chicago and immediately signed up for improv and comedy writing classes and immersed myself in the Chicago comedy community. I worked nine to five jobs to support myself, but just about every night of the week, I was doing some kind of comedy class or show. During these six years, my dad was able to get the most leverage out of the following joke. I don't know, we sent her to an Ivy League school and now she's a comedian. <laughs> Dead on impression of my dad. <laughs> Finally, in 2008, the Second City Comedy Theater hired me. I would actually get paid to be a comedian. Four figures, y'all. Uh, fast forward to last summer. <laughs> After a showcase in Chicago, I received a call that SNL wanted to fly me to New York for a screen test. After a week of practicing my characters and obsessing over which jeans to wear, I found myself in Studio 8H at Rockefeller Center. One of the impressions I did was Miley Cyrus, saying stuff like, it's been pretty cool, like, being with my dad and going on tours, all of that, so yeah. That's where I go. Oh. <laughs> um, this, uh, thank you. This, <laughs> this audition was one of the most exhilarating experiences of my life, and I went to at least two AE Pi formals in college. Uh, sh <laughs> Shortly after that, I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Lorne Michaels in his office where he told me about the show, he asked about my family, and he was incredibly nice. At one point he asked me if I had any questions for him. I could ask him anything. But somehow, the only question that came to mind was, how many fish are in your aquarium? At the end of our meeting, I left his office thinking, I nailed it. If nailing it means acting super weird <laughs> and blinking a lot. A few days later, I got the call that SNL would like to hire me as a cast member. I lost my mind. I went totally crazy. And less than a month later, I found myself living in New York, working at my dream job. I still remember my first day of work. It involved a lot of being starstruck and trying to hide it. So many amazing things have happened this year, from meeting Sir Paul McCartney, to performing opposite Robert De Niro, to making Russell Brand touch my boob. I wrote that scene where he touches me. Okay. I feel so fortunate to be working on SNL. Well. I hope you're inspired by my story. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. Thank you. Um, but some of you may be thinking, hey, thanks, show off, but I don't care about your stupid career. 
Or, when is this lady I've never heard of going to stop talking because I'm hungry? <laughs> or, I don't even know what I want to do with the rest of my life. I'm only going to address the last group because the rest of you are being kind of immature. <laughs> you have plenty of time to figure out what your dream job is, but here's a hint. If there's something you love doing and are good at, there's probably a job where you can do it. This theory was confirmed when I found out there is such a thing as a shoe publicist. <laughs> Ladies, stylish men, think about that for a second. Finally, once you know what you want to do with your life, realize that you most likely won't get your dream job right away. It's more likely that you'll get a job hostessing at Cucina Italiana, where after working for hours on end, you'll get so hungry that you sneak into the bathroom stall and shove focaccia bread in your mouth. But every job and experience that you have will teach you something. It will only make you stronger. So be prepared to work hard and pay your dues. You may find yourself copying an entire children's textbook and then chasing down a UPS truck so it can be sent to a voiceover artist who lives in an earthship in Oregon. I don't know what an earthship is either. She lived in one. You may find yourself trying to explain the importance of proofreading to a room full of ad execs who refuse to look up from their paninis. You may have just finished a stand-up set and have a woman in the audience approach you who you think is going to compliment you, but who actually tells you not to do your material anymore because she hates it and she hates you. <laughs> you may be sure you are going to be cast in an exciting new theatrical production, but instead find yourself crying into a half gallon of Kirkland ice cream when you hear they went a different direction. You may find yourself at an audition for a planter's peanut commercial where they are looking for a, quote, extremely unattractive woman. <laughs> and despite how much it pays, you may secretly really not want to book that role. You may be complimented, insulted, excited when things you go your way, and utterly disappointed when they don't. But if you believe in yourself and stay focused on your dream, you will get there. Now let's go hit up that free food. Thank you.